Hello, Tuesday. Oh, hello. I said hello, Tuesday. Yeah, hello, Tuesday. Hi, everyone. It's Tuesday on your view. Welcome to the show. I am Mariah Afola. Happy Brand as always. I have the latest with me. Good morning. Hello. I'm still looking at this in your head. And like, I'm, I'm studying the center part. Here. Don't worry. Uh, you, you know, you that say, don't matter. I will just be you. Yeah, do you know what I'm doing? This, this week is center part. Accept it. <laughs> it looks okay, nice. I'm so scared to ask you how you're doing. Because I know how you're doing. But let me just ask you for the sake of it, how you doing? I don't know. I really don't like to lament. You know, um, for the past two weeks now, I've been having one issue from one issue to the other, from my roof to the accident, and now this morning, just on my way, <sighs> my phone was stolen from the car. I usually like to enjoy the fresh air early in the morning, so I remember to, you know, wind up my glass when I get to traffic, but today I didn't remember. So I just had uh, a bang on my car. So I turned and the guy was saying, you're tired, you're tired. I didn't know what was happening. There were two. Apparently one had entered and just put his hand and took my oh, phone. I didn't know. Oh, it was just after I drove away from there. I saw them running, but then I didn't know what happened. I just thought somebody came to tell me and then he's running mm -hmm. for me to reach for my phone and my phone was in there. That's my work phone. I have a lot of things on that phone. So I couldn't get to block it this morning, but I just called my account officers to mm. you know, block my account so that no transaction can be taken, yeah, can be taken from there. Please, oh, my, I don't have my phones with me. Nobody should call you and beg you for money or ask you for anything. My phone oh, is I'm out. Oh, so sorry, but that can so frustrate yeah. you. No one is going to help you. Just, it just seems like I'm just causing unnecessary expenses. Just feel no, terrible. It happens sometimes. It said when it rains, sometimes it pours. But also, it may just be that something big is about to happen. And so you go through yeah. this tough time. Honestly, to I'm not going to lie. These are the kind of things that <laughs> push people out of this country. You just want to leave. You just feel like, you know, the, you feel like just, this is just the wrong place to be at this time. That you just want to, people are moving out of this country for these kind of things. When you're constantly frustrated, you can't, somebody hits your car and they get away scot free. Mm. You're, you're, you know, um, you're somebody steals your phone. Your food yes, you know, all these things happen. And you're just like, what kind of country are we living in? But you just pray that at some point, we see that light at the end of the tunnel. Because uh, I like Pele, Pele about yeah, I mean, There's sorry nothing else about I'm going to Pele. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. And I just hope that you'll be able to get a new phone soon and start work because that is your work. Yeah. yeah. How are you doing, Mariam? I'm fine. Uh, <laughs> I'm fine, sorry. <laughs> I'm really fine because today is my wedding anniversary. Oh, <laughs> congratulations. Yeah, thank you. You look so, amazing, how many by years? the way. Thank yeah. you. Do you know? Top of my head, I have to think about it. I mean, it's been that long. I mean, oh, how yeah. many years? Yeah, how many years now? Really? Seven, eight? I'm yeah, not sure. Like yeah. Eight yeah, eight years. So, this has been very long. I love wow, yeah. it. It was a long time. <laughs> you, you know, I'm not conscious yeah, yeah, of. Yeah, but the thing is, I was just saying that um, I really like when my marriage is mm -hmm. at this point in time. I mean, marriage is like life, you know, ever changing, ever evolving. And sometimes people take a snapshot of your marriage at the time, maybe a week or a year. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that you cannot judge marriage by what happens in a week, in a year, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, it's like it's especially now. I just noticed that um, usually before, in the beginning, when my husband and I would have a disagreement, it would be something I'll carry for a whole day or a whole week, sometimes Feeling. a year. You know, you think about it and ruminate. Yeah. But now, he and I will be having disagreements. I'll be like, fix your collar. And then he'll be like, oh, okay, thank you. And then we'll continue the disagreement. <laughs> you know, so right. the disagreement has just become yeah. part of the conversation. Right, right, so today, right. after our morning prayer, he was saying, uh, he's taking me out. Let's Aww. go for let's let's go for drinks. I'm like, bros, never. I'm not going for drinks. I've been on my keto diet, uh -uh. and the only reason you even want me to go out is because keto is making me look like a hottie. Yeah. So don't come <laughs> between me and my keto. Maybe I'm born on that beginning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I saw you. He dropped you off this morning. I yeah, saw you driving out there. How yes. cute. <laughs> How are you Thank doing, Topsy? I'm good. Any good news for us? Um, I'm grateful to God. You know. I, 
my dad is healthy. We had a bit of a scare, and everything is going better now. I didn't want to mention anything when we were going through it, but like yeah. we're still <laughs> expecting to do some tests and all of that. But um, I'm trying to get the sh uh, get on the show to discuss some health challenges that affect men in their old right. age. But um, I'm grateful to God for life. You know, everything can come and go, but once you're alive, you would you'll be okay. Oh, I know. I was telling you earlier that my, my five-year-old was traumatized this morning. She came to me, Mommy, are thieves real? Do, do people really steal? I said, yeah. I said, do they, do they take somebody else's things? I said, yeah. I said, they can actually steal you. <gasps> they can steal me? I said, yes, they can steal you. She was so traumatized. She couldn't believe that thieves were real. Mm -hmm. And I had a good laugh <laughs> because a child was practically discovering that sense. somebody can actually steal so, something that so, doesn't belong so, to so them. So what happens to people that make them resort to causing harm and they don't see that they are causing difficulty to other people, that they don't feel the other person's pain? So, so I, I understand just, I feel what you're going through mm. and I only hope that, you know, you know, fast forward, you, you just laugh about this. In, you know, you know sometimes I look at our children and I'm saying they're so innocent. Yes, How do we protect this innocence? Uh, but yeah. no way. Unfortunately, we can't do anything about that. Let's move on very quickly. We're going to breeze through the front pages because we have some serious things happening right now in the National Assembly. You know, it's the big story of the day. Mm -hmm. Who's going to be the Senate president? Who's going to be uh, Speaker of the House? So that's the big news. And we'll be going in and out um, of the House of the National Assembly while the voting is going on. We'll be cutting out because one of our viewers, not to miss any intrigue going details. on in the house. I just hope there are no punches today. Mm. It should be civil. And I think the paper said they should yeah. go with the, uh, they shouldn't 20, go with the 2015 mm, um, the method. They're going to go with the 2011 method. Let's go on a break. We'll come back. We'll breeze through the papers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Right. Welcome back. We're going to start with Daily Trust. And why are we starting with Daily Trust? Guess what? <laughs> they have this nice picture of the of the goings on in the uh, National Assembly. Hmm. Here we have intrigues as Senate President, House Speaker emerged today. Mm -hmm. A picture here of the battle happening. I, I wish you can get the picture um, of Undume and Lawan, Bajabia Miller, uh, all battling for the rules today. Bandits killed 12 in Niger communities. Jam clears 15,490 <coughs> candidates accused of malpractices. Youth gain as Senate Assembly Speaker emerge. I think that's an oil. Recommended on against retirement, says NJC. An African Development Bank invested a billion dollars on African SMEs and others. So as I said, we'll be monitoring uh, the happenings at the um, National Assembly as it's going on this morning. But let's go quickly to the oil speaker as a 32-year-old emerge speaker. Yes, yeah, so Very interesting. They're, they're Talking about youth, it looks like youth finally made an impact this time around mm -hmm. um, across states. But especially two um, come to mind uh, in Oyo State, a 32 year old. His name is Ade Bo Ogundoi, mm -hmm. and he's emerged speaker of the uh, Oyo State. Yes. Your second time, actually. No, he's been re elected. Yes, I think, but second time is a, I, was a, I, was a, I was an assembly, I was a lawmaker. Oh, and then okay. Second time is now the speaker. Oh, but okay. the main gist is that in Plateau State, there's a first timer mm. that oh. emerged as a speaker. He was born in 1986 and yes. he's also still a student yes. at the university. 500 low. level. In play two. Yeah. Wow. Yes. That's, 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 that's what it just for is. Like, mm. they already have their Fantastic. inner work, so who they want to be. The so speaker. what we need to do now is monitor these states closely. Yeah. Mm. Let's, yeah. See Let's see if they'll they be work. rubber stamps mm. or they'll actually... Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Please, when, be good ambassadors for the young people. Thank we you are finish. begging you. Be good ambassadors. Now that you have the opportunity. Yes, you have a platform to model the right values for the leaders that have been there before so that they will see the state and be like, we want to have young people here too. Good news for Jam. I'm sure so okay, let's let's take it. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Yeah. So um, you know the head of um, um, we've had um, alleged examination malpractices right. mm -hmm. with this uh, Jamba results mm -hmm. that a lot of them were being seized. Mm -hmm. So the head of uh, media promised that they were going to investigate, which they actually did, and now they've mm -hmm. exonerated fifteen thousand two hundred and ninety students. Their re really the results news. have been released, <coughs> though they still found about four centers that are culpable. So those centers have been delisted. Then there were some people who were not able to write their examinations in. Abuja and Otoke, yeah. they've arranged for them to write their own examinations. Nice. So okay, moving on to the punch. <clears throat> Ninth Assembly, we talked about that already. Uh, Northern elites promoting poverty, says Mogalu. Mm -hmm. Generator films kill twins. Eight mm -hmm. wedding guests at Imo. Mm -hmm. Headsmen abduct women, stepson in Undo, demand 10 millionaire ransom. Seven feared dead as cultists cause mayhem in Lagos communities. And the picture, you can't miss the picture 
of <coughs> fans um, getting into the court, into, into the pitch actually, in the match against uh, Carlo Pillars against um, Enugu Rangers in Lagos Stadium, Agege Stadium here. Mm. Actually carrying sticks. Yes. That's really scary. I, I saw a video of it. Really, really And then terrible. one more story. Nigerian press organization settles AIT and NBC feud. Mm. Garba replaces Bokachua. Tribunal here 16 applications on articles petition today. Let's start with the human interest, the wedding party. What happened? Okay, oh. I wanted to take that story somewhere Which else because there's a, another story here that's not in another paper. Marriage, a woman yeah. and her stepson that was abducted. Right. Okay. So uh, she was just coming back from church <coughs> on Sunday. This happened in Akure, Undo State. And um, she was driving in a Lexus Jeep when she saw cows just more like blocking the road. So she had to try to make a U-turn just before she could turn. The headsman attacked her, destroyed her car, and abducted her and her son. So they, after a couple of <coughs> hours, they called the husband to pay 10 million ransom. Though the police is saying that they are investigating it. But I'm just wondering, we've been having issues of headsmen until today. We don't have anyone that has been prosecuted. So are they telling us that the villagers around don't know where these people run yeah, to? Yeah. It's really, really unfair. It's really sad. Really sad. And then I'm so happy that the NBC and um, AIT I've have been able to um, come to a dialogue so because many people were involved. You know, yeah. many people were involved. Um, the NG, that's the Nigerian Guild of, Guild of Editors. We had the newspaper organizers. NPO. Every, everybody came together to sort of find a middle ground for them. So the agreement they've reached now is that they would re, uh, um, rearrange how they would make the payments and installments. That's for their dues that they haven't paid in a while. And they would also ensure that they have a neutral body in charge. Um, they were appointing <coughs> a new person, um, omnibus or something. There was a word they used mm. to describe someone who's going to be neutral at the elms of affair within AIT and Ray Power to ensure that you don't just take things from um, social media and bring on air like that. Mm -hmm. However, the uh, chairman, of emeritus, their yes, media stories. chairman emeritus of AIT and the, that communications mentioned that we are in line with the constitution and we were re they were ready to go to court, but they were in line with the com constitution with the that allows them to give yeah. um, um, freedom of code. speech. So, yeah. Yes, they, that they are, <coughs> so it, it, at, at least we, they are going to be reopened now. And so let's just watch. Um, so it's been lifted, and hopefully mm. um, they yeah, can. Everybody are. abides by the rules. Yeah. Let's move on I want to take Kisli Mongalo's story because Kisli Mongalo was former candidate for um, the presidential candidate for YPP party, yeah. and he was speaking at Amino Kano Teaching Hospital, saying that um, the northern leaders have ruled Nigeria for 42 years cause, um, over a period of uh, independence, and the, the 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 north has nothing to show for it. And there's a whole lot that can happen if Nigeria can restore mainly saying that there are resources within the north that can be if well and nursed by leaders there will be major growth and that the, the, the young people who are currently still being left on the road are going to be disaster in the future because we have Boko Haram based on they were not taken care of before the okay. news that have been growing so let's just move begin on. and push and listen practically saying what we already know yeah let's well, like, it's speaking <coughs> there so maybe okay. they would listen let's move on to Vanguard Ninth Assembly there. fresh Swiss as sure. court orders open ballot uh, let's speak a story we haven't mentioned. Buhari versus Atiku. Garba takes over panel as INEC queries exclusion of Oshibaja in petition. Official June 12 now, Democracy Day. And how kidnappers could, um, attack my convoy since I carried Dolu. So officially, June 12th, tomorrow has been declared public holiday. Right. But another good thing is yesterday was signed that from next year, I mean from... May 29 going forward will not be a public holiday, only June 12th. And that mm. whenever May 29 would be um, handing over day, it won't be a public holiday. It will still be working day. All that will take place is the handing over, the swearing right. in. And so now only one official. And the, yesterday uh, was also the Hall of Fame. It was established yesterday. Yes. I know uh, Kudra Tabiola, Let's Kudra Tabiola, and that amongst others at that level. And also I think Mrs. Um, the Senator Ulu 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 was also well. honored. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse so me. We want to talk about the workings of the um, APC. So they've been having meetings. Um, the APC and the National Working Committee have been having meetings with the governors <coughs> and they're talking about how to zone the principal offices, you know, to their members. And also the um, party chairman has stated that the people who they are backing are uh, Senator Lawan mm -hmm. for, uh, for, for uh, president, Senate President and Gwaja Mia Miller. Of course, there <coughs> were a few people who still are trying to run like... Um, What's his mm -hmm. name? <coughs> <coughs> trying to run, even though that the party, even though the party doesn't, endorse you know, him. hasn't endorsed him. So but we have they're saying that they ruling. hope that he listens to the party mm. and also the leader okay. of the party. And the high court is saying yeah. that they should use the 2011 yeah. one, yeah. which is which is an open ballot. ballot. Okay. Yeah. So, so as I said, it's people. happening as we right speak. Mm. So we'll be cutting into there to see um, how the vote is going on. So but let me just run quickly. Daily Sun, very quickly. Lawan versus Dume. The zero hour is here. Ten die of generator fumes in Imo. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and mm, Buhari is, according to Garba Sheru, 
our president is saying, I'm satisfied with performance of security agencies. So people are saying that. Is he really saying that? Italy to repatriate Nigeria's stolen funds. So yeah. uh, the delegation from Italy yeah, were in Nigeria. So, yeah. And um, they promised to cooperate with our government to ensure that all stolen funds are returned to Nigeria um, um, immediately. Now, Imo, what happened in Imo? Yeah, so yes. 10 people out of 30 something that went for their relative's wedding. So after the wedding, the bride and groom went back to um, Abba. But then the other relatives didn't have anywhere to stay. So they decided to spend the night in one uncompleted building. <laughs> and then they decided <coughs> to put the generator oh. just there. 10 of them died instantly. About 20 something of them are in the hospital receiving treatment. We've been saying this over and over. You don't put your generator close to where you are it's because called of the fumes. carbon monoxide. I it's don't dangerous. Know. Goodness, the air really coming out of from the it's cars, painful. from the generator is dangerous to your health. You can't you can't inhale those things and it's survive. Even, we keep saying that over and over again. But anyway, um, so is it Garba speaking of our president yes, so speaking? Yes, um, Garba Shea was speaking on behalf of the president, said that um, he has passed a vote of confidence on all the security agencies that they are capable of safeguarding the country, people and property. He said though there has been failure in <coughs> intelligence gathering in the local level, so he's... Um, is, and he was saying this based on the concerns raised by the Zamfara advocacy group yesterday, addressing the issues they've raised concerning insecurity in their society, that he trusts in the um, agencies, he's giving them a vote of confidence, they will continue to do their job, but we should help on the local level to, level to gather information. Tell that to the woman that just got kidnapped, or Honestly. tell that to someone that just paid 10 million naira oh, ransom, ransom for their family. That's all we can take on this. When we come back, we speak to Westerfield. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for um, staying with us. Somewhere around the corner, people are traveling and trying to get into university for the fall. So joining us on the show is the Pro Vice Chancellor, University of Hertfordshire, Julie Newland, NBE. We also have with us the Regional Manager, West Africa, University of Hertfordshire, Bolanle Obadina. Welcome to the show, ladies. Thank you. Good, Good to morning. have you. Good morning. So, lots of people are planning to school abroad. It's supposed to start school in the, in, in the fall. And they're deciding which schools to go to, what country to go to. And Brexit is a major obstacle. It's a major issue. Like, this issue of Brexit, how would it affect me applying to a university in the UK? Does this affect any prospective students? Really, international students? No, it doesn't. Okay. European students, it may do. Right. Uh, eventually, they are guaranteed uh, access to loans and, and everything will remain the same until 21. And then we don't know. Mm -hmm. But international students, it right. simply won't affect them. It, uh, it never has and it never will. Mm -hmm. it, and it may be to the good that you know, we have to open up, we have to be more global, okay. and we are actively right. encouraging people to come to the UK. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit more about your institution? Certainly, the University of Hertfordshire, uh, it, was, it was actually created in 1952 Whoa. as uh, an aircraft engineering college okay. to support an industry. So its roots were actually in industry, right. researching and teaching for industry. And then over the years, we have had, we, we, we've started health, business school, computer <coughs> science, uh, we have a very famous engineering school, astrophysics. It's a very diverse range of subjects, but very applied and very rooted mm. in industry right. and for and so industry. Know, so a lot of Nigerian, Nigerian students go off to the UK, especially for school. But uh, we also have heard cases of where they're done with school and they're asked to leave. What opportunities would they have if they were to go to the UK now for, to study? Okay, so at the University of Hertfordshire, number one thing we say is we're employment-led and industry-focused. So most of our courses come with the placement here. Okay. So any student that is studying at the University of Hertfordshire for undergraduate have the opportunity to either choose to study and work for one year, 
um, during their, their, their course of study, or then for our master's courses for business, for engineering, um, computer science, cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, they can actually opt to take the placement option. So if they take, ap applying take, for instance, international business, they could choose international business with the placement here. It allows them to work one year full time, mm -hmm. which is a good deal for us. And it's going to be paid placement. So it's not oh. just someone working in, in the kitchens or anything. It has to be paid placement wow. so that the student will have um, an opportunity to have the experience <coughs> that they had learned in school mm. at work. So there's a child that has just is about to graduate and they're weighing their options. How or where do they go to meet you, your team, to apply for your school? Okay, so we're having an event tomorrow um, at um, the Eco Hotel. It's called the University of Hertfordshire Open Day. Okay. So for students who had not applied before right. or who had applied, they can all come to the Open Day. They'll meet all of us there. The Vice Chancellor is also in Nigeria. Mm. So it's going to be a lot of um, interesting thing to do tomorrow. So we can take the application immediately and then come back, um, give them the offer letters if they qualify. So what's the average cost? Because of course many people will be considering what will be the cost implication of coming to study in your institution? And is it like a payment plan or we have to pay? Yes, so <laughs> this is what Nigerians always want to hear. Um, the University of Hertfordshire is not too expensive but it's not too cheap too. So mm -hmm. for undergraduates it's £12,350. Annually? Uh, Yes, annually, right. and then for postgraduate, it's £12,650. Okay. This can be paid in up to three installments, so Fantastic. it's pretty flexible Fantastic. for international students. And then with the courses with the placement year, they only get to pay for the first year, mm. even though they have to stay, they can stay for over two years. So they, they pay for the first year, and then they work for the next year to recoup. So so let, me, let, me, let me ask you, what would you be looking out for if at this open day, this open session you're having? What exactly would you be looking out for? How would, does a child know I've been selected? What, is, what, what are those things yeah. they must have to be qualified? I think we're looking for enthusiasm, hard work, mm -hmm. demonstration of hard work, enthusiasm. I think studying overseas takes a bit of courage. Mm. I think when you're a young person, that can be daunting. So yeah. somebody that presents with that curiosity mm. and that ability to have the courage to, to study overseas. Well, studying at um, Hertfordshire, would it allow for working alongside studying? Because a lot of international students sort of need to, you know, fend for themselves. Right. And would, is there an opportunity to be able to do both? Yes, yeah, so every international student can actually work for 20 hours per week during term period, and they have the opportunity to work full time when they're on holiday. So yes, they right. can work. Do you, you have any plans to partner with a local institution here? That's why we're over here at the moment. We have relationships with various institutions and they have started to mature. And oh, we would yes. really like to um, create much stronger relationships um, oh. with, with institutions in Nigeria. Oh. So one concern of mo for most students is while we when we invest that much money into our education, what's the employ employability rate? Mm. You know, so that I'm sure that when I come out, what's the statistic that I would get employed? What's, what, what's that for Hertfordshire University? Okay, so our employability rate is at 96.7. Oh, That's yeah. really high. In Nigeria? Yes. It's even in the UK, so <laughs> it's really high. And then I, I say to international students, why don't you go online, find out what every other student is talking about. Mm -hmm. Don't listen to only what I'm saying because I want to sell my university, but you need to listen right. to people who had gone to University of Hampshire and mm. experience the employability. Do you have online courses? Because people feel like, you know what, I can't travel, I don't have anybody in the UK, I know I can't afford it. Can I, can I get, a, get a degree online from Harvard? We have Chef? business courses, computer science courses, uh, creative arts courses online. Wow. And we also do something quite interesting, which we call supported distance learning, which is something we're interested in, in, in bringing out here, where students can study online, but also with a local college, so okay. they can get yeah. pastoral support, mm -hmm. tutorial support, in the in a college in in country but then take lectures and assignments fantastic. online mm. which fantastic. is a great yeah. mixture yeah. now a, a kid living in nigeria going to the uk alone you don't have family they need guidance counseling they need direction here you have someone to even guide you through no what family. you do. Yeah. there there's nobody do you do you have do you provide counseling services for young um, students to guide them with their careers and what ways you know, you know how they when the kids have issues in school 
we take it very seriously. Yeah. We provide that also to our own students, our own home students these days have a lot of issues. There's a lot of pressure being yeah. young now, yeah. a lot of pressure on them. And so we, we have counselling, we have careers counselling, we have pastoral counselling, we have a student union. There is an enormous oh, is amount of... pastoral counselling? That's important to Nigerians. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. very, Nigerians are very religious people. So yeah, once really? there's a pastor involved, I mean, yeah. So I, th I think it, it, <laughs> it gives us a, a right. level of support that oh, isn't yeah. necessarily about Irreligious. somebody that is um, finding nice. life difficult. Right. Right. You don't have to find life difficult to need support. Mm. No, it helps you be a better version of yourself. Right. So is it costing anything to attend? You say you have an event tomorrow at the hotel. Would it, it cost free? anything to attend that event? It's absolutely free. Mm. Students had actually registered online. Oh. For people who had not gotten an invitation, they, could, they should come and then we'll take, the, we'll take their details right details. at the... At the venue. When does it start? It starts at 10 and ends at 4 p.m. Okay. Yes. So they're going to see you there and see Julie. And see the vice yes. chancellor and yes. see the director. Yes. The fantastic. entire team will be yeah. right there. Are you guys read that nice. You're all smiling. Are yes, that we nice? are. We love Nigerian <laughs> students. This is very exciting. My first trip to Nigeria. Right? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. You're welcome. Oh. <laughs> Hope to have you back soon. Absolutely. Thank you. Oh, good. But, um, any final words for our viewers out there? Anything else you'd like them to know? Um, just always, I say, think hearts come to heart for share. That's what that's what we we put out, and Nigerian students are really really happy with that. I'm always available to support international students, right. so I take them through Is all the Nigerian community in Hertfordshire. Because oh yes, oh, yes, we, ha we have a lot of Nigerian all community. Stuff, so, so I support them through the application process, right. through the visa process, I ensure that nothing is left out. Fantastic. Regardless of whether they're working with an agent, right. I am there to support Fantastic. them through well the process. Thanks, Fantastic. I feel like going back to school. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all we can take on this. When we come back, it's Monday. We're looking up with the National Assembly very soon. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. This is quite a sad one for all of us, mm. and it's a cause for concern. Mm. According to reports that we read, I think over the weekend, uh, the hand of a young boy who is less than 15 years old was cut off totally. Why? <coughs> He was caught fishing in his neighbor's compound. That story broke the internet over the weekend, and everyone is talking about it. We haven't spoken about it. I mean, we, it, it's, it's, a, it's a problem, and it's a, it's a difficult conversation to have when you feel this issue of discipline has gone too far. But you can watch the video. If you have no idea what we're talking about, watch this clip. Oh, I don't. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we had to blur part of the uh, the, those, the the bloody areas, but um, the the what happened in that video was we saw fact that this boy's hands were cut off and um, I didn't even know how to even start this conversation because we know we hear growing up oh I'll cut your fingers you still or oh, I'll pull your ears I'll pluck your nose you know those little things that they tell us but it's not it's not it's not real these are these little threats you give to kids to make them scared of doing certain things but this man actually cut this boy's fingers and you know when we wanted to have this conversation there were not so many sides to this because it's what is wrong is wrong how do you understand or rationalize that behavior in any way. And what can we do to prevent this kind of thing from happening again? I hate the fact that we're becoming a talk shop. But the truth is that we can't stop talking about these exactly. issues. So when you watched that video, what came to mind, Mariam? For me, I cried when it was first sent to me. And that's why when it was played again, I could not watch it. It was just so sad. I just don't understand it. I'm never able to watch anything that involves children being purposefully and consciously hurt i can't stand it and i don't know how another human being will see a live child before you and you hurt the child i tried to go on because when we said we we're going to discuss it as you said i thought 
his, he should be he should be locked up, you know, something he should compensate them somehow, make sure he, they take him for surgery, make sure he gets his prosthetic uh, prosthet uh, prosthetic um, mm. palm back, you know, and just pay for all the damages. But then I said, okay, let's just try and see what the law says about this. And I was hoping Nima would be here, you know, somebody to guide us. Because when I went through Google to try and see, you know, what the information was there for Nigeria, but, I didn't yeah. see. But, so Nima, across the what, world, what I would like us to talk about really mm. is this has happened a lot where yeah. people are just venting anger or you taking, get venting their, taking out their frustrations on anything and anyone. Now it's going to kids. What is getting us to this tipping point? And how do we get to talk to each other to stop for, for, or reduce for me, this drama? I, going on? I believe that this is just a reflection of what our society has become. Growing up, when you see a young boy get into the compound to steal, for instance, you know, you call him and you, if you want to shout at him, you shout at him. The first question he asks is, who are your parents? What are you doing here? Mm -hmm. You know, and then villagers could likely gather and, okay, you are hungry, Abby, and they'll gather yams and gather vegetables and go, don't do this again. We want to see your parents and all of that. But now we're in a society where people, you know, pass out their frustration on anything that happens to them. In traffic every day, you see the frustration at homes with wives and husbands. You see that uh, uh, frustration. How can a child who is not even stealing come into your environment to fish and all you could do? Because when they asked him a question, he said he, he wasn't even feeling remorse. He was saying that he didn't know how he missed his neck. So he was aiming to kill that boy, an 11 year old. And you are a father, a 61 year old man. It's terrible. This is just where our society is. And I will point so, it back to poverty, okay. if you ask me. Okay, so the truth is that, we, as I said, we cannot, we can't rationalize it anyway. So yeah. it's how do we get here? So we're, we're in a state of anarchy now. Is there any place in Nigeria that is not having one form of crisis or the other? There's none. Um, is there, can you, in, can you engage any Nigerian that will tell you that they honestly feel that the government is empathetic towards their plight or they feel that if I take my case to the police, mm -hmm. I will be heard or if I take my case to the police, I will also be held in custody. So we have people that do not trust the system. They don't believe in the system. We've taken laws into our hands. People are fighting and protecting themselves. That is anarchy. That is why we're having more of this thing. So we used to threaten people and say, I'll cut off your hand if you steal. I'll put paper in your private parts and now people are doing it yes we didn't used to we, we've have heard it before many times people are doing it yes. someone will steal you burn the person alive why didn't you trust that if you take it to the police the police will handle it you know we don't trust the system so it is a systemic breakdown and until we are able to deal with it holistically the society will continue to will continue to express the frustration and their dis, the, um, the, that discontent. Di, di, discontent in One every another. way possible. So we have cultists killing each other in, bro, in, in the society. Just in case people don't understand. Everywhere. Uh, maybe, maybe our leaders do not understand. Everybody is traveling to Canada. This Canada thing has been... <laughs> because we are tired. Even, listen, I'm not going to lie. Me, I, am going to, I, was, I'm, I, I never was interested in this issue of education. I, I left Nigeria to come here. But I'm tired. Every single morning I'm here saying the same thing over and over again. I'm about to go and line up the Canada station. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, going, I'm yeah, tired. Yeah, yeah. Leave, I'm going to you. Yeah. Because station. it's frustrating. <laughs> it it's is. frustrating. You want to have kids grow up in this kind of... My, my daughter was traumatized when, when I told her that this morning that thieves are real. Because to her, it's like, why would... How can, how, can somebody, how, can, how can somebody steal what doesn't belong to you? Mm -hmm. Now, this child, for instead of you to discipline a child, now you rather cut off his neck or cut off his fingers. What, what kind of country are we living okay, in? Okay, so Mariah, see, I understand our frustration, but let's not just make it sound like it's a Nigerian thing because uh, there are American kids being shut down now for the color of their I skin. Think they have electricity. Let's just say. <laughs> yes. So let's just put that in perspective, that okay. there's danger everywhere. Okay. Now our only is to teach our, ch our children and try and protect okay, them wherever, wherever they find themselves. Fantastic. For me, this problem is about this particular man. I'm not going to make it a whole Nigerian problem because I've seen older people teach children the way to go. This man has a problem. But I see, believe it might be a mental health see, issue these that we're dealing with. These people who have with. taught their children the right things to do will face these kind of people on the streets and they'll cut off their fingers. Whoa. So as much as we don't want to preach doom, which I totally agree and I respect that, let us be optimistic. We've been optimistic for six years. We are getting to that breaking point. What is the, what are, what are our what leaders doing about this? What's the law enforcement doing about this? What is the society? What are the, uh, the, the religious leaders, the ballers, the, the, um, the, the, the governors, the, the urbans? What are they doing about these Why, things? I so much pain when I know that even when he's arrested, he may just serve 
and nothing will be done yes, to now. him. Okay, I felt so terrible. Okay, Julu. I would go for an eye for an eye. So you chop off a hand, you get your hand chopped off. So you're off doing the same thing. No, 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 by the law. You get your hand chopped off before you are sent to prison. That way, people will know, <laughs> think twice before they want to hurt another okay, human being. You know, thank you for bringing that up. Thank you for bringing it up. I read in the papers yesterday or today that Lagos State rounded up all maybe 90 people or something, occultists. Mm. Over you know, 200, so, total between February to and now. And I'm thinking to myself, where are they going to stay? Mm -hmm. is, it that, is, it, is it the curriculum? Overcrowded. Where, where, where exactly? At some point, you're going to let them go. Yes. So, so, because so. you are telling us front page people that you arrested X amount of people. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to get excited about that. They're going to go back on the streets. It's just feel like so, but you get a whole no, other no, issue yes. apart from this. No, no, but <laughs> the, the, the challenge is that this is just a subset of the issues on ground. Okay. So this man that cut off, you don't get it, he chopped off a human being's hand. Mm. It, hey. it is, it is, it, there, there must be a level of inhumanness and, and anger that. and evilness. This evilness. person is evil, evil and wicked. So we've seen and it Jean play Mando. out in many areas. How do we stop this? We had our PVC and people did not go out to vote last year. People had PVC, they didn't go out to vote. We have the so same government largely everywhere. Morayo, our leaders are the ones that can change this problem. Hey. And the people will choose the leaders. So we have people okay. that have chosen what we All have. Right. I, I get How it. else can we do I get, this? I get it. But I think you guys are just, you know, you're going way above the leaders. And everything. Let's talk kind. to you. Can we be kind? Exactly. Can we be human? One-on-one. Mm. On one. Together, your neighbor, that is a 61-year-old, he has a neighbor, probably has relatives. Let's start from that level. He could have children. Leave those leaders all the way at the top. Start from us. The leaders come from these communities. They come mm. from ourselves. These leaders do not come from heaven. Mm. So first of all, we'll learn to treat each other with kindness, with empathy. Mm. Then we'll have the sort of leaders that we want. Yes. Yes. But this man has a mental health issue, and that yes. is what should, should be looked checked. into. Okay. Then we, we also need to teach ourselves, like we're talking about it yesterday, I answer, but we watch a lot of American films. So when I saw that uh, hand being carried, mm. the first thing that came to me, they should get ice, 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 yeah. and cooler to preserve the hand before mm. the child is mm. taken to the hospital mm. even when they get to the hospital so that at least even if nothing else they can stitch attach it back. yes stitch it back so we need to learn some of these things so that if anything happens Thank you can you. Like salvage that. the situation mm -hmm. before uh, anything is you know, done when i had the car accident back in the u.s mm -hmm. my the driver i was driving and no i wasn't driving i was a passenger the person that drove his nerve got chopped off mm. totally fell off, off. Mm -hmm. fell off because the, the car uh, flipped four times and it crushed so his nose fell off mm -hmm. and it was attacked back it was saved in ice, right? I have was a friend too that lost his nose in an accident in Nigeria and his nose was attached exactly. as well. So, so, yeah. Unfortunately, I mean, as I said... I think, I think Mariam said, killed it. Yeah, so I, I think, think that on a, we should just... While we're waiting, while I am expecting that our leaders would restore hope, and you know, give us that something to look up to. Let every one of us be kind to one another. And you know, I did a video on no. anger management last week. I did before this happened. When you are angry, because this man was yeah. genuinely just angry that these boys are who. When you are angry, just take a few minutes to take deep breaths. It is simple. Some people have genuine anger management. They cannot control okay. their anger. Unfortunately, calm down before you do anything you will regret. Yeah. Okay. In the meantime, some people yeah. are moving to Ghana. <laughs> yes, Rwanda. So. You guys are, you are tired. I'm sick. Right. Right. I will try really hard. <laughs> Canada station. I will, I'll try really hard. <laughs> Not to go to Canada station. Anywhere. I don't go. This is where. Let us go. If you come back, it's about cosmetic surgery. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. So we're told that um, it's happening in the National Assembly. We have our senior correspondent in the National Assembly, Mr. Femi Akonde. Are you there? Good morning, Femi. Okay. Okay, so Femi is not there yet, but we can have the clips. We're seeing the clips of what's going on at the National Assembly very soon. They will be voting, and it's an open ballot. Mm. So we know um, who's voting for who. And in the next couple of hours, you should know definitely who our Senate president is in the House. So those are pictures we're getting from Abuja. And the moment our correspondent takes on, we'll link up to him to tell us exactly when it's going to start and how the voting is going on. So those are the clip pictures you're seeing right now, live pictures from Abuja. Right. 
Great. So I'm really, really excited about that. I can't wait to see how this goes on. <laughs> OK. With us, we're talking about cosmetic surgery. <clears throat> cosmetic surgery actually was a foreign thing in the past. But now many Nigerians, according to reports, especially the famous ones, have now made it a part of their lifestyle. From fixing their behind, <laughs> talking in their tummies, mm -hmm. fixing their noses, join us now, lifting their yeah, join us a consultant, <laughs> plastic and aesthetic surgeon, Mr. Femi Oladeji. Welcome to the show, sir. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. So you can call us on 070-806-68014. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect, please hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweets. During the break, we're saying that hmm, we are all customers. Oh. <laughs> but every, all customer. Everybody, I have a friend that wanted to do a tummy talk, and I kept saying, her, of course, so you look beautiful the way you are. I don't have to, but more people are doing this, and I'm thinking, hmm, maybe it's the trend now. Tell us, first of all, tell us how the market is in Nigeria. Are people really actually doing these surgeries in this country? Okay, if I will start with what has been in the past, yes. for us to realize that uh, it's not new as it were, as oh. per uh, the market. Right. The market is not actually new. It's just that, okay, assessing the service probably was not as common yes. or, or was not as available as right. it is now. now. I can also tell you, it's not still as available as it should be for you to have an idea of how big hmm. probably the market is. So give us an idea of the kind of requests you get generally. Like, is it bot adjustment? Okay. Um, let me also try and say first that Cosmetic surgery is just a very small aspect of plastic surgery. Okay. Do you understand? It's just okay, it's out there, it's, it's, you know, it's more popular in the media mm. and everywhere. So it seems to be known more. Mm. Whereas the burden of plastic surgery is so heavy. Mm. Now, uh, if you say what people assess more, mainly the commonest uh, request is liposuction. That is taking out fat, you know, through small holes in the body to you know to either use that fast or throw away mm. some people just like how certain areas of their body look and they want to make it look better you know so liposuction is the commonest then now the result of getting the fat out mm. you know what can i can you now use it for oh. are you throwing it away are you putting it elsewhere so if you now come to that next level wow. then you can ask okay putting it in the butt in the breast oh. you know in the face mm. and some of the things i didn't know that the legs yeah, yeah, yeah. You can put yeah, it in the legs. Yeah, so sure. I can remove fat from certain areas and put somewhere else. Anywhere in the body and put oh, anywhere in the body. Oh, that sounds good. OK. Mm -hmm. yeah. It does. Yeah. So, but, but you know, um, our heart goes out once again to the family of Stella. Mm -hmm. But the former first lady was linked, her death was linked to the fact that she went to do liposuction. So there are many Surgery. people that are scared that this but tummy enough. talk or the tummy talk particularly will, might lead to, because for me, that's even the, I'm, I'm one of those, I have twins and they tore my stomach apart. <laughs> and no matter how I lose weight, I'll still have loose skin. Mm. And it's, it's just the reality. My mother mm. can say, no, if you do it, there's no exercise. I've gone online and checked. Loose skin is loose skin. There's yeah. nothing you can do about yeah. it except you do a surgery. So what are the dangers attached to this thing? Mm. Are there really dangers attached to it? Let's know. Okay, mm. let me just <laughs> mention quickly. That uh, particular incident uh, of Stella, mm. sorry to say, which I personally will always say, we are not sure of the detail. And as a surgeon, there are so many aspects of surgery. Right. The pre, the surgery itself, the of after, yeah. you understand that could lead to some of this uh, uh, unfortunate uh, demise. So I can say jokingly that that's where markets for us somehow, <laughs> you know, but it's not actually uh, as, as it's portrayed. Okay. Because if proper things were done, you know your patient, you do the proper assessment before surgery. As a surgeon, we're like prophets who already know where you're coming from, mm. where you are now, where you're likely going to. Mm. So you likely want to do things to ensure right. that you have uh, satisfied that that person is likely fit, right. almost fit yeah. for that surgery. You have anything that you have all the time, especially in cosmetic surgery, it's not an emergency. You don't have to mm. already mm. to do it. Yeah, so, so I was going to say that um, the cosmetic surgery, is it really about profit? Or would you have you, uh, a, a customer or client come in knowing the person is able to afford you, but you say to the person, I do not think you're fit for this surgery, and please just go, knowing that that's money going? Yeah, if I use myself as an example, mm -hmm. I've turned so many people down. Um, so many people have reasons? paid, and I have to return Why? their money, because Why? they are not fit for this what surgery. Kind of, what, 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 what do you mean by they're not fit? fit? Fit in the sense that, head-wise, there are so many history you have to get. Mm. 
to ensure that, okay, the person is fit. They come in, you right. assess them, you see certain things in their body and feel, oh, this is like, it's going to portray danger to the person, mm -hmm. to the surgery, so you turn it down. Or you now could not pick that, and then you test. Mm -hmm. There are certain investigations you need to do to ensure that the person is fit for surgery. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, the result came out. Even though the person is looking normal, everything wow. comes out, and then it's not, the results are not okay. Then you turn that person down, or you have the opportunity of probably correcting what is wrong. Mm -hmm. So the person has to maybe shift the time mm -hmm. and do surgery. Yes, sir. We're still um, monitoring the okay. pictures. I can see some uh, pictures of the, I just saw the Minister of um, Information and Culture, mm -hmm. Lajilai Mohammed. Uh, other leaders of the, the PDP and APC parties are there. So we're monitoring the fees as, <clears throat> as the voting starts or once we see them settled, we'll definitely link up to give you full live feeds of what's happening at the uh, National Assembly. We don't want our viewers to miss any part of this um, um, voting that's going to happen very soon. The leaders are um, they're all in, a, in, a, in attendance and the hall is getting full. <laughs> and very soon, once they get to order, we'll definitely link up to... Um, to the viewers, yes. So I, I used to feel that um, doing, going into surgery, doing this cosmetic surgery, plastic surgery, tummy tuck, liposuction, whatever it is, that it's as a result of low self-esteem for mm. women. But then my eyes opened one day to the exercises that we do, trying to keep fit, trying to make sure you take in your tummy. I remember after having my third baby, I was as big, but then I, I wanted to cut down and reduce everything, and I had to go to do the same exercises. But now, plastic surgery on its own is just going the like artificial way the of, doing the, sa the, uh, <laughs> of doing the same exercise. So it, it gives you the same result at the, at the end of the day. So, uh, but a lot of people feel that once you start on that journey to uh, plastic surgery, that you continue, because I watch Botched a lot yeah. in, on E, and I've seen women come in there who have done one, two, three, four, and right. they just keep coming. So they're addicted. And, and two, and two, two uh, weekend, uh, weekends ago, I listened to uh, this Tonto Dike, and she was saying she was going for another plastic <laughs> surgery. So I got scared, like, so if I do this once, there's a likelihood that I want to keep to changing my body. Is mm -hmm. it addictive, like she said? Okay, let me, I'll try and clarify that, you understand. Um, but let me also mention that, uh, as exercise has its role, plastic surgery has like role. different role. Okay. There are certain things you cannot gain, that people gain following plastic surgery mm -hmm. by doing exercise. Okay. Do you understand? Okay, so, but exercise has eternal benefits. You, whether you do plastic surgery or not, you must exercise. it's not something you should stop. Mm -hmm. You understand? Now, uh, this is what happens with cosmetic plastic surgery generally. You know, and then as plastic surgeons, we have that a uh, gift of trying to make things better than what they were before. Mm -hmm. You understand? In fact, if anything, that's what makes me choose plastic surgery. I love to make things better. You understand? So now, uh, if you know that if you go to somebody, it makes something that you really don't like before better. You understand? You're likely to go if you see another thing. You keep, hey. on, you keep on going back. How do you stop? Do you understand? No so it. now, probably you did your breast before you were mm -hmm. satisfied. You okay. saw. Okay, your nose. <laughs> Do you get so? Let's talk about the breast for a second because <laughs> the nose breast. Some people have issues of they have too small. Yeah. Some have seen issues of one is bigger than one, mm. two very obvious. Mm. Some have issues that is too big. Mm. What can you do to Some help these stages? Fed, now so what can you do? For, let's start with the very big one. <laughs> can you help them reduce it to be smaller? Yeah. Those that are one and a half, can you help it to be <laughs> to get the very balanced. close balance? Yeah. And those that are very very small, small can you make it bigger? Of course, the answer is yes. yes. Really? Yeah, yes. yeah. yeah. But wow. let me let me start with the because you see, plastic surgery is not only about uh, somebody wants. Yes, yeah. you understand. The one you cited first, which is the big breast. If, okay, if you look at like the plastic surgery page, just recently we treated some people. You understand, and of course, from time to time, big breast is a burden. Mm. Hey, it can be a burden. Do you understand? I mean, really big breast because the person starts having neck Back pain, hand pain, even to the extent that they may start feeling numbness in their hands. Mm. Mm. You understand? So at that point in time, it's even a treatment. You know, in which, if you look at it, certain government system should be responsible for such because it's a body is as big mm. as somebody having accident or whatever. And then the emotional burden of which 
any of the classes you mentioned, mm -hmm. small breast, big breast, yes. not emotional equal breast, they are all, the emotional body is even much more. I forgot than one the segment, body. the one that is that falls, that is like that, that touches yeah. the floor, yeah, yeah, yeah. that wraps around. Can you make it stand? Of course, now. Can't do everything. <laughs> okay, wow. so in, when, when, we, when we're talking okay. about this, we we tend to, because we're women, and then we tend to be um, you know particular about how we look. But do you have male clients, and what do make male clients oh. want? What are they asking for? Okay, the commonest cosmetic surgery they ask for is actually yeah. liposuction. Mm. Oh. Somebody, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah. Chest somebody has you know big pot belly. Mm. pot belly, and then you want to uh, make it flat. They want to look you know wow. muscular. And you can do that. Of wow. Course. So the information. Yeah, and I've also seen <laughs> that you do maybe breasts. Yes. Gynecomastia. So maybe. I will try and post gynecomastia okay, soon. So, you understand that yeah. we've done in the past. You can see some on the page. Is this safe? Understand? What has been your record? Like, people are yes. worried that somebody, somebody just did a gastric bypass recently and right. she passed on um, hey. shortly after. Really, really sad stories that we're looking at it that like, over oh, cosmetic surgery, you better carry your breast like that. Yeah, but like, what about the safety? safety? People die. Yeah, I, I, I used to say, um, anybody can die from anything. You Yo. understand? But I also point out, especially when people come to my clinic and then they really want to compare things, I say, how many people have died from cosmetic surgery all over the world that you can count? Mm -hmm. But in this uh, Magudo alone, how many people have died from CS? Mm. You understand? It's just because, you know, the societal uh, <laughs> acceptance of each of these comparisons are yeah. different. Mm. Do you understand? So okay. now, but like I said, the principle of surgery is you must know your customer yeah. in course. How do you say it in bank? For you understand? So, Let me take this call. Yeah. Uh, from Satellite Town. Good morning. Are you there? Hello? Hey, Good morning, Catherine. Catherine. Catherine, go ahead, please. Okay, I want to discuss on this first topic before yes. I move on to this one. The go thing ahead. is, I want to talk about talk, talk, something about the government. The truth is, talk, the, the government has nothing to do with this. He has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with this. Because as an individual, if I cannot treat whoever is by my side well, this man, I don't even think is psychological. It is not. It is something that he wants to do. You talk of a woman being tired, <coughs> and you're telling me the government. And you're saying that we, we collected PVC. Uh -uh. <laughs> the truth is, I have been voting all my life. What have they done? No. Alu killing was there, other things was there, and you're telling me the government, the government has nothing to do with this, please, we should stop this government old drama right. and face the reality in front of us. Mm. Thank you very That's much, Catherine, for your point. Mm. Now, um, let's go on a quick, when we come back, we'll still be following up very closely what's going on at the National Assembly. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned, your view will be right back. We're we'll right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. So for our viewers on DSTV, we're going to be linking up now to the news station so you can watch very closely what's going on at the National Assembly. But for those of you on GoTV Concert and um, I think Star Times, you can still watch us on the TVZ Entertainment Channel. So we'll be going off and linking up straight to the National Assembly. Now, our guest. I need to ask you about um, <clears throat> issues of scars. Because I know I have lots of scars on my body. I was in a car accident many years ago. Mm, and my, this part of my body is a, a work of art from, <laughs> from, my, from my ankle all the way up. Mm. So, and people have told me that back then I tried to do plastic surgery to get it covered. But I just never did. I just like, you know what, I don't really care. But now that this plastic surgery is becoming really, really popular, can I still go under the knife to get those scars covered? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, let me first say, scars are permanent. Okay. okay, so what plastic surgeons do, or anybody who has the skill to modify scar, is to modify them to look less obvious, less conspicuous, okay. less uh, deforming, right. you know, remove or reduce the, uh, the anatomical or physiological e effect right. of the scar. Right. So okay. it depends on how they look, okay. what they look like. Right. But you can camouflage them in a way, you can read, you know, direct them in a way that when somebody sees, it's not mm -hmm. as obvious right. as before. And like I mentioned before, scar is a typical example of what, why somebody have to go back for plastic surgery over mm -hmm. and over wow. and over again. Mm -hmm. I remember growing up in plastic surgery, I remember a young lady 
who had bonds on her face. By the time we started, she was looking somehow. By the time I stopped, or at least before I left where she can still come back to me, you know, she'll come back and say, Doctor, see, I'm seeing that this is like this again. She'll come back, we adjust this car, come and see her in two weeks' time. She's better. So now, what happens is, in such cars, you can make it better. Now, we work with some people who can also come off like scar mm. to look at like the skin around you. Tattoos. Right. So, you understand? So it's sir, like a permanent I, tattoo, but uh, it's not like the black and white, right. black, red right. tattoos. I'm concerned about the recovery process because mm. I know that uh, people who really do plastic surgery are people who can afford it rich people so to speak so <laughs> how long does the recovery take what conditions are you supposed to be under in order to recover properly okay well it depends on the surgery you are referring to like and also let's dis disabuse the fact that it's rich for rich people i've said yeah cosmetic surgery is just a small aspect of plastic surgery so everybody can afford plastic surgery mm -hmm. uh -huh. you may not be able to afford certain cosmetic surgeries you understand so now the recovery depends on what you are doing you can probably do some plastic surgery even cosmetic surgery today, I'll go home. Whoa. Yes. You know, yes. I, I think I forgot to go tell you to even define what plastic surgery because there's some viewers that don't have an idea. This plastic, we don't need plastic surgery. <laughs> so please, for those who have no idea what we're talking about, since just in a nutshell, what exactly is plastic surgery? Oh. Okay, plastic surgery is, is derived from the word plastique, you know, Greek word plastique, which means plastic. You understand? Meaning, uh, <laughs> it's not fake. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning, you know, you're able to adjust things, you're able to modify things, you're able to modify, um, manipulate. You know how plastic, yeah, when yeah. it is soft, how you can, yeah. you understand? So Stable. now, uh, it is, it is, it's those surgery that we do from head to toe that needs making something look better. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because so you are God. <laughs> no, not because we are God, because God gave us the skin. You know, talking yeah. about God, yeah. talk, talking yeah. about God, I know a lot of people, that's actually how I got to contact you. They send you messages and they are praying for you. May God bless you. You have changed my life. I am a different person. And I don't understand because, as I obviously mentioned in the beginning, some people say it's lack of self-esteem. Is it just really about self-esteem or is there a deeper issue? You see, woman is complex, mm. honestly. And um, maybe I was lucky to have done some courses on emotion. Mm -hmm. And I even realized that negative emotions are the way of life. If mm. you can solve somebody's negative emotion, you find out that that's why you totally change things around them. Mm. Like I mentioned, this your studio is very mm. beautiful. You understand? You like it. You have, you have contra rise a negative emotion that people will have. So what is there is that they are deep feeling. We are more of emotional people. Do you understand? I, I wish I can give you a text of one of the clients I received yesterday. Mm. She literally prayed all Yeah, I see those prayers you get. You understand? Yeah. So sometimes you find out that it's not just about people want to look fine, oppress other people. No. It's because they are solving a problem in their life. Yeah. Mm. Do you understand? Something they have been, they've been carrying for so many years. The one you understand, obviously, is like, okay, the man who caught somebody's harm, and then if he was yeah. lucky, had come early to, the like in Lagos, some of us have this key to reattach it. Tell me what will happen to that boy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Forever so, yes. so you could have attacked him, so, reattacked him if he yeah. came to Yeah, it could be. If, 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 if it was less than six hours, mm -hmm. you understand? It could be. That's why the icing and all those things. Important. Yes, they are important. So it's, it's, it's a deeper thing, it's an emotional thing. That How do you deal you with people that come with you with religion? Mm -hmm. God has made you like this, God Give made it. you fat. How can you go to do surgery to take away sleep. fat? God has, you are telling God he did not do a good job mm -hmm. when he created you. How do you deal with the those sin. religious yeah, mindsets and statements to you? Uh, you see, the religion actually, if, if you understand what it is, is you uh, having a good relationship with your maker, you understand, through the people you have around. Do you get? So uh, I said you stand to condemn. Mm. I stand to be the judge of God mm. this time around. Who actually says, that person was created fat. <laughs> Do you understand? You are not I God like to have angle. said, okay, uh, God has created you fat. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yeah, so, good. yeah, you know, it's, 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 it's like uh, uh, somebody comes in, you understand, is he, looking for a solution of what has been a problem. Yeah. And sometimes being fat as it were, you understand, could also be a burden to somebody. Mm -hmm. Why somebody is trying to get fat, okay. <laughs> Some other person is, you know, you know, is getting, is trying to get slimmer. So let me ask another question. Okay. 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 Sorry, let me just ask this, which is, 
um, taste, varying taste, aesthetic taste. We used to have it. really skinny. There used to be a time where, when you're really skinny, that was the look to go. Mm -hmm. Now we have people going for hip enlargement, Thanks butt enlargement, huge. They're looking like three <laughs> times their original size. Seeing how changes happen with how people perceive beauty, sure. is it something we should encourage, really? Because in five years' time now, it will change. Will change. Will so back. you see people with tiny 24 waist Inches. and now 50 hips. <laughs> I want it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know um, as football is defined now, it's about goal. When you score a goal, you win. Yeah. You understand? It's not about when you dribble mm. and stuff like that. You understand? So, uh, also, fashion dresses. You understand? So, I'm when changes. things change, you, you change literally it. also change it. Right. Okay, okay, let me take Jess. Imagine when you're 60 with Jessica, the are you there? Thanks okay. for calling. Yeah, good morning. Morning, go yeah. ahead, please. Um, I, I'm so happy. I mean, oh, with welcome this to the topic. show. Um, so, um, I have this um, insecure, insecurity about my leg. I oh. have this tiny ankle. Are many. Cool. I mean, it makes me, I hardly wear short um, mm. dresses. Join the club. We are like, many. Um, <laughs> right. Um, short skirts or um, yeah. um, whatever, mm. anything short. Right. I right. usually go for long trousers right. and all that because also. of my, and at times, the sneakers, the people sent to me and all that, I don't like, I mean, wearing them because I have the tiny ankle. So when I get them, I will like, ah. Or more this this one one Thank you, Jessica, for that. Food. Thanks so for taking I... us to that. So, 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 for someone like Jessica now, tiny legs, tiny ankles, can they take fat from somewhere and put it in the legs to make it fatter? The answer is yes, straight forward. <laughs> 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 we are so many. We are so many. I've had cases where what, somebody comes to you looking perfect and still wants to do surgery and you realize it's more of a psychological thing have you had that case where you send the person to go get sorry um you, psychological go, evaluation go get, is that psychological <laughs> help yeah yeah so uh, in as much as i know this time to like look condemning the person mm. i just try to encourage sometimes even some of the surgeries you do you are so patient to have done so much work and then you look at it as an aesthetic surgeon you're looking at it so fine somebody just come and said Look at this spot, and you can't see anything. Hey. Then I said, so as an aesthetic surgeon, what you do, you actually have to look and be in page with that same person. Wow. Do you understand? So by the time you have seen it, you know, OK, uh, like you know, recently. That would be a very you know, difficult you're speaking, patient. You're, you're, you're speaking sweet words to me. You know what? I, had, I mean, I've had surgery. I mean, I've, I've, I've had, I was in a car accident. Mm. So I know the state of my body. I have like excess water here, <laughs> excess water here. So if you, if you, like, everything is just over the place, yeah? Mm. So are you telling me? <laughs> that you can readjust the leg to be wow. smooth. Like, because I have, I have excess water on my right thigh. Mm. Mm. Excess because it was arrested you. And my surgeon at the time told me, you go, you, you, when, you, when you have a surgery like that, you can't have all the water go away. It's just arrested you. Are you telling me you that you can smoothen out the leg <laughs> to be straight? Do you, you really mean the water or fat? I don't know if you, well, you see that. Don't that <laughs> Somebody. I mean, that's interesting. It yeah, is yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, this um, Brazilian bot is in vogue. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So everybody wants. Africans naturally have this bot, most of us. Uh, not all Africans. <laughs> yeah. Most of us have that, you know. Shoot but then people are doing whatever it takes to make sure that they have that bot. And they are going for injections, mm. you know. So sometimes. Oh, someone died from it. Sir. Yeah. So how. how Dangerous is that injection? Do you mm. can you go because some people don't want to go under the knife, and so they have the option of right. taking injections. What do exactly. you say about the injections? Right. Mm. Okay, uh, okay. Let me also try to lay a foundation. You see, sometimes I try to look to be able to answer some of these questions. People come in or call, or you have interaction like in this forum, and then you're saying, ah, why are people looking for being figure eight? And I say it's an ancient thing. If you look at even if you see arts. Hold art. You see the way sketches were done. You cool. see dresses that have been done in ages. You mm. see, so it, it, it's, it's likely to be something that will last for Forever. a very long time. Now, coming to uh, injection, actually, once you do it right in the right place, do you understand? Ev almost everything in life mm. has their own risk. Okay, let me take Barakat. Barakat, are you there? Yeah. Yes, good morning. Morning, go ahead, Women are calling. Yes, I just want to tell the yoga there that uh, he will continue to have customers in Nigeria. <laughs> in as much as our men, they don't look at the inner beauty mm. of a woman. They look at the physical aspect of it. 
Mm. You know, they don't look at inner beauty like character, like maybe intelligence. <laughs> they look at the physical aspect. So you continue to have some of that. <laughs> 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 market question yes. you asked at the beginning like i said it's been something for a long time you understand and then um to to add to what she, she actually said well uh in as much as now i'm not trying to portray our market as it's where mm. you understand uh the inner beauty is the most important thing mm. but Tell before you see that one you will you see the physical one. <laughs> <Wait, wait, wait. laughs> okay, okay, I think we're just gonna break, okay. but ah, oh, goodness, I don't want, I don't feel like we for this break <laughs> because this is juice. Stay with us, you right <laughs> <laughs>Okay, thanks for staying with us. So we have to run up very quickly. I have to ask this question. If you do plastic surgery and you suck here, you part there, you do everything, and you're not getting to 70, mm -hmm. what happens to you? I mean, I feel like all the silicone, all the things will start melting well, away, and that's not even looking like a creature from <laughs> Mars. <laughs> so what happens when you get older? Do you, are you, do you advise the client to remove those things, or do you actually die with it? Yeah. Okay, um... If you talk about implants, yes. implant, any implants, most implants, and maybe for example a breast implant, uh, have durations they should stay. Either you now remove them or you change them, oh. you understand, or you adjust. When you remove them, you adjust oh, the wherever. Changes. But uh, as it were, um, if, if, you, if you look at fat as it were, they are living tissue. When they get elsewhere, they survive and keep behaving. Is your fat, mm. and then they keep behaving like yours. So with age, there is nothing that will happen. Mm. Do you understand? Oh. Though sometimes the fats grow bigger. Oh, yeah, they grow bigger, and then uh, you may have to but go and reduce again. You're making it sound like this is all nice. I've, we've seen videos of people that they, they put fat in their bum, and then the fat is now sliding down. Mm. They now have fat Jesus in the wrong Christ. place, yeah. or Ew. they did silicone in their yes. boobs, and it shifts now rocks. shifts to another place, and it just looks bad. You yeah, cannot yes. make it look like it's all perfect. Yeah, these are the complications uh, we discuss with, with patients when they come in. And if you are ready for possibilities, <laughs> Mm. These are not things you say it will happen. But like I said, as a surgeon, you look forward and tell them the possibilities. So the, there are options. There are non-invasive options. So some well, for a few are, things. Yes. Yeah, so like what are those options that people can... So people may say, I'm too afraid to go under the knife. Please, what are other non-invasive okay. options? That okay, non-invasive depends. I mean, non-invasive options for or different things that uh, differ. Right. Do you understand? So if you are specific, I may say. Now, say for example, the one that is re readily available and probably affordable in our environment is, okay, cosmetic surgery of the face. Mm -hmm. You understand? Or cosmetic processes of the face. Okay, you can do uh, can you botox, you can do derma fillers, mm -hmm. you can put fat. So instead of going under the knife for them mm -hmm. to take fat, you can just, okay, just fill those areas with derma fillers for me. It's cheaper, you understand, if you compare, um, it, it's cheaper if you compare to doing derma fillers for like butts. It will be so, so expensive that I doubt if anybody will mm. like to but afford then it. But also we have people example, with, uh, for liposuction, are there non-invasive options for liposuction yeah. or taking out fat in your tummy? Ah, yeah, somehow there are so many in the market there, but most of them don't work because by the time somebody goes, I've tr and I've tried it, okay. they eventually end up with the surgical option. Mm. If you talk of liposuction, the only thing is, okay, you can talk of laser, Laser, but in laser liposuction, it's virtually like the same thing with liposuction. Oh, the only thing, okay. in addition to what you do with the cannula liposuction, you now use laser machine, it has to dissolve the fat. At that oh, point okay. in time, the fat becomes less. What about less. dimples? I've seen people that they do they use surgery to give themselves dimples. dimples. Like yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, they do. Mm. Yeah, 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 yes, yes, they yes, do. Yes, they use yes, surgery yes, to yes, give themselves. No, it's not surgical, oh, please. Quickly, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I feel that uh, women are put under pressure by men to look a certain way. So you've had kids and then your husband is saying, yeah, this is your stomach. Is this, it used, this to your, be, it used to be like this, it used to be like that. And then women are put under pressure or probably the man starts chasing someone who has Flatter. a slippers type of... She has a baby. Exactly. So together. can you advise <laughs> our men on how to help us, honestly, because they are the ones putting us under this pressure. Are you sure he's the right okay. person? <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> that's what I would have said. <laughs> <laughs> Whether I, I, advice you know, us. Yes. Based because, on your experience, what you've heard women tell you, yeah. Yeah. Um... I want to say, for people that are married, you understand, the husband factor is very key. It's very important. Do you understand? But I want to tell you, ma, 
that if, if based on studies, and then what I heard from my clients, most of the time is the woman that, that actually feels. requires it more. Oh, okay. They actually need it more. That's it's true. now whether the husband will support mm -hmm. or will not. That's true. Mm -hmm. okay. That's true. We put ourselves under that pressure. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of men are just like, if, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. my yeah. husband if said I... to me that I must say today oh, that he has not given me permission <laughs> to do any form of surgery. <laughs> Anything I decide right. to do is my own you know, yeah, exactly. responsibility. Unfortunately, that's how we go around it. But there you have it. <laughs> there you have it. You can actually, if you choose to have surgery, be careful. Uh, make sure that you have you are the right person because there are some people that are not right for this yeah. kind of surgery. Mm. And plastic surgery doesn't have to be cosmetic. Mm. It can actually be medical. The things mm. you need to do for uh, to to, to mm. go on the but Either way, be safe and make sure you weigh all the options mm. before doing it. Now, tomorrow is our live audience show. Again, send your name, the phone number, and a picture to your view at TVC Communications. TV. It doesn't mean that if you don't have that, you can't come in. You can come in. It's just that we want to ensure we have a database. But if we have our 30, just the first 30, and we're done. Because we don't want the studio to be too crowded. And some people always have to wait outside. And we don't want that to happen anymore. So please come early so you can get a slot. Have a fabulous day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.